Russian lawyer at heart of Trump probe revealed to be James Comey's FBI snitch. By Sorcher Fayol, July 12, 2017. What does it mean? Dot com. Another stunning Security Council report circulating in the Kremlin today states that the Russian attorney now at the center of America's ongoing deep state coup against President Donald Trump has been identified by the FSB as being a private snitch informant who was working under the direct command of former FBI Director James Comey and who, after successfully penetrating the Trump campaign, was rewarded by her receiving a lucrative contract from the McCain Institute. According to this report, following the shocking information presented to President Putin by President Donald Trump last week at the G20 summit, proving Hillary Clinton's vast corruption of federal companies, banks, and government institutions, our report titled Enormity of Hillary Clinton Penetration into Russia Warned Could Topple U.S. Government, the FSB discovered another such scheme. Then Secretary of State Clinton became embroiled in involving Russian railways. Russian Railways is one of the three largest transport companies in the world, but who came under intense scrutiny in 2009 when Andrei Yakunin, the son of Russian Railways President Vladimir Yakunin, struck what was called a landmark deal with the Residor Hotel Group, a company listed on the Stockholm Stock Exchange that has long experienced operating hotels, ahead of President Putin's order that one quarter of this massive state-owned company be privatized by the end of 2013. A multi-year FSB investigation into this landmark deal between Russian Railways and the Residor Hotel Group revealed it to be a vast money laundering scheme involving not only Vladimir Yakunin and his son Andrei, but also Petr Ketsiv, who was the vice president of Russian Railways. The essence of this money laundering scheme involved the funneling of illegal contracts to Western companies tied to Hillary Clinton for building hotels along the right of ways of Russian railways and were to be overseen by an American named Mark Sutton who was just appointed as a director of the Residor Hotel Group after his being groomed for this post by Tim Morse who is the CEO of a multinational real estate company named 10X that Mark Sutton worked for, and who, in turn, was the master money manipulator of this failed internet giant Yahoo run by top Hillary Clinton supporter, Marissa Mayer. In 2009, when Andre Yakunin initiated this illegal scheme and Secretary Clinton installed Tim Morse as the CEO of Yahoo, this cabal also created a shadowy private intelligence company in London named Orbis Business Intelligence LTD to protect their interests, who employed former British spies and with the most infamous of them being Christopher Steele, who created what is now known as the fake Russian dossier that damaged the reputation of President Trump. While following the trail of the FSB's investigation into this money laundering scheme involving Hillary Clinton and Russia Railways, U.S. authorities in 2013 filed their own indictment, but not against Andrea Yakunin or his son Vladimir Yakunin, but instead against Denis Katsiv, who is the son of Rail Russian Railways Vice President Petr Katsiv. Following this U.S. indictment against Denis Katsiv, President Putin ordered an immediate rapid conclusion to the FSB's investigation of the Hillary Clinton Russian Railway scheme, and when presented the findings in October 2015, fired its president, Andrei Yakunin, with his son, Vladimir Yakunin, fleeing to, to London after being granted a British passport. President Putin also fired Russian Railways Vice President Petr Katsiv, and who six weeks later in December of 15 made a personal offer to FBI Director James Comey to become an informer and provider and provide the Americans with all the evidence supporting this scheme. Negotiating this snitch deal between Petr Katsiv and FBI Director Comey was Russian attorney Natalia Veselnitskaya 
and whose efforts were successful as evidenced by U.S. authorities dropping all of the charges against Denis Katsif in May 2017, settling their case for $5.9 million with no wrongdoing admitted. Important to note about Natalia Vasilinitskaya is that the snitch deal she negotiated between Petr Katsiv and the FBI director Comey was done in Vienna, Austria, as she was not allowed to enter the United States, but who was mysteriously this past summer granted a special access visa that could have only been authorized by a top Obama regime official. Upon Natalia Veselnitskaya being granted her special access visa to enter the U.S., she was strip-searched in London under orders from FBI Director Comey in order to make certain she was not carrying any incriminating FSB documents relating to Hillary Clinton's crimes. And when entering the United States, she said that she was contacted by a British publicist named Robert Bob Goldstone, who said he had arranged a meeting for her with top Trump campaign officials so that she could advocate for the repeal of a U.S. law called the Magnitsky Act. To the real facts regarding Natalia Veselnitskaya's being allowed to enter the U.S., however, FSB analysts in this report do detail was that while she was negotiating the snitch deal between Petr Katsiv and FBI Director Comey, she too was recruited to be an FBI informant, and as evidenced by her receiving a lucrative contract from the McCain Institute, arranged by one of its senior directors named David Kramer, who was a former U.S. State Department official, and that just eight days after meeting Trump campaign officials, David Kramer arranging for her to meet with the Obama regime's former ambassador to Russia, Michael McFowl. Critical to note about the McCain Institute director, David Kramer, is that he has been shown by the British High Court in the High Court of Justice Queen's Bench Division claim number HQ17D00413 to be one of only two people, the other being U.S. Senator John McCain, to have possession of the fake Russian dossier against Trump prepared by the former British spy Christopher Steele for Vladimir Yakinin's shadowy private intelligence company, Orbis Business Intelligence LTD, using sources too incredible to believe by any normal person. With all respectable Western journalists failing to publish the fake Russian dossier against Trump being peddled by U.S. Senator John McCain and David Kramer, though Senator McCain then gave it to FBI Director James Comey, who since his receiving it, and supported by his leftist mainstream fake news media allies, has continually used it to discredit President Trump. Even more absurd than FBI Director Comey's actions is that this fake Russian dossier prepared by British secret agents using supposed Russian sources was also used by Hillary Clinton's campaign against Trump, and that numerous U.S. legal experts have stated was illegal for Clinton to do, but with her only using this standard against Trump, with one of the so-called experts even laughingly stating, without irony, quote, If Donald Trump Jr. sought dirt on Hillary Clinton from the Russians, he might be charged with conspiring to violate the election laws of the United States, which prohibit foreign nationals from contributing anything of value to an electoral campaign. As many experts in American politics are now warning that the anti-Russia narrative against the president will continue because, quote, everyone is afraid of the deep state. The U.S. mainstream fake news media is... Also, content to not tell the people in their country any truth about these things as they believe these people are too stupid to understand anything. And that was shamelessly displayed this week by the New York Times top journalist David Brooks, who stated he didn't bring a friend to eat at an upscale restaurant because they only had a high school education and wouldn't understand the menu. And due to these elite American journalists not telling their citizens true things, Virtually none of these people know that the main claim that Russia hacked the election was already been proven to be a complete lie, as the most conclusive forensic examination of the hacked Democratic Party emails stunningly revealed that all of these emails were printed out, 
copied locally from the DNC's own computer system. And just five days before DNC data analyst Seth Rich was mysteriously murdered. Hi, I'm Seth Rich. I was the DNC staffer who gave WikiLeaks the DNC emails proving that they had rigged the primaries against Bernie Sanders for Hillary Clinton. Soon after, I was shot twice in the back and killed. Police are still looking for my murderer, and Hillary Clinton now invokes my name in calling for gun control. And to anyone believing that any of these deep state criminals aligned with Hillary Clinton and the Obama regime will ever be brought to justice, their hopes will be dashed, and as evidenced by a young American intelligence analyst named Reality Winner who sits in a solitary confinement facing decades in prison for the crime of printing out a classified U.S. government document and giving it to the press, while former FBI Director Comey, who printed out classified U.S. government documents and gave them to the press, still walks free to associate with his deep state allies at the New York Times while their coup d'etat consumes that whole nation but whose President Trump, even today, prays to God in his White House Oval Office so that Americans might be saved.